So, Julian, meanwhile, while all this is happening domestically, overseas, it doesn't seem like it's been a week where much good happened on the two big problems facing the president, Ukraine, and Syria. In fact, things slip backwards on both fronts to some extent. That's right. We have in Syria allegations that chlorine gas was used uh, against rebels. We have a situation where the Assad regime looks stronger than they did uh, perhaps before they started giving up their chemical weapons. Now, there are a lot of chemical weapons out, 92 percent, uh, but uh, you know, if these chlorine gas uh, accusations prove true, the U.S. has not confirmed them yet. Uh, it shows that he can give up the banned weapons and still use gas. And, and the French foreign minister was in town this week, not only beating the drum about chlorine gas use, but also reminding people that while 92% of the weapons have been destroyed, the production facilities have not. That's right. They have not been moving uh, to, they've shut down uh, access to some of them, but they haven't destroyed them. And they, uh, agree, the agreement is to destroy them so that they can't reconstitute. So the great fear is they will get out, uh, they'll stick to the letter of the law on getting out their chemicals, they'll keep some uh, precursors, they'll keep the pre, uh, production facilities and they'll start up once the world's attention goes away. Um, and the reality is things are getting worse for the rebels in, in Syria right now. Worse in the sense that they lose more ground steadily? They're losing ground. Um, the, the moderate uh, rebels that the United States has looked for have not gained in strength or influence. Um, but we're coming to a time where there will be a decision uh, point for the West uh, on once the, either the June 30th deadline passes or all the chemical weapons are out, what do you, what's the next move? Do we want to go and train more of the moderate rebels? Do we want to give them heavier weapons than we have uh, so far? In, in meantime, Vladimir Putin from Russia seems to be slowly increasing his grip on eastern Ukraine without ever having to actually send a soldier across the border into eastern Ukraine. That's right. Now, obviously, last week he said he was going to pull back his forces. Um, he got a lot of press for that. Uh, we have not seen any uh, actual movement. Uh, at the same time, uh, he did not uh, take the extreme position after the secessionist vote, and he did not make a move like he did in Crimea to, to endorse that or to uh, take control. He seems to, uh, Russia's play right now seems to be to try to uh, increase their negotiating position to create a weaker state in Ukraine. So then what was the impact of those votes, those secessionist votes earlier this week? Well, they were, a, they were, they aren't going to lead to uh, a breakup of Ukraine immediately. But it does give the East, um, particularly moderate factions in the East who are talking with Kiev still, uh, more uh, leverage as they are arguing for a more federalist system. Now, there was a proposal for uh, a federalist system uh, in Parliament um, that has, that failed. Um, but a lot of observers think the way out of the crisis, if there is, is something that really redefines the, the regions and the provinces' relationships with the central government. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it may be that those votes uh, rekindle some of those uh, conversations. Right now, though, uh, Kiev says, we don't want to negotiate with terrorists. Mm -hmm. uh, they are regarding the, se the mass separatists as terrorists. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, for President Obama, the real predicament comes after there's a national presidential election in Ukraine on May 25th, because then there'll be either a new government or a government that's been uh, intimidated by the Russians at its birth, and then the U.S. will have to do something, right? I mean, the key question is who is elected? Uh, is our, you know, there are very few candidates who are going to be uh, acceptable to the East, uh, but is it acceptable enough to Eastern Ukraine that things start to, to, to tamp down and negotiations begin? Or does that re-intensify this crisis, uh, forcing the United States to, uh, uh, to take a more dramatic uh, actions on sanctions? Well, next week we'll know a little bit more about all the things we've been discussing here, though, the May 20th primaries and the, the potential uh, for a change in Ukraine because of the presidential election. We'll be back to talk about all those things and more. Meantime, you can join the conversation uh, on Twitter at hashtag WSJLive. I'm Jerry Seib.